Microsoft Outlook has many great features related to its calendar functionality. In this video we go through calendar settings in Outlook so that you know how to adjust it to your needs. To adjust calendar settings in Outlook go to File Options. There you can find options for all functionalities of Outlook. To adjust calendar options click on Calendar in the list on the left hand side of the dialog. Calendar settings are grouped in sections in order to make it easier for you to navigate. The first section is called Work Time. Here you can adjust what your working hours are, when your working day starts and finishes, which days of the week are working days and also what day is to be seen as the first day of the week. Depending on what hours and days you define as working, Outlook will display them in white or grey in the calendar view to indicate working time. The last setting in the section defines which week should be considered to be the first week of the year. You can choose between starts on January 1st, first four day week and first full week. This setting may for now seem to be relevant, but you will see later that it is quite important, at least in some countries. The second section is called Calendar Options. The first option defines whether Outlook is supposed to add details of online meetings to all meetings you create. When you click on the Meeting Providers button next to this option, you can choose among all online meeting providers available in your system. Here you can see we only have Microsoft Teams to pick. Further down in this section you can define what the default duration of new appointments is supposed to be. By default Outlook sets it to 30 minutes. The next option is quite useful if you want to ensure that you have some breaks between meetings. If you mark the Shorten Appointments and Meetings option, you will be able to define whether you want to end your meetings early or start them later, and you will be able then to define the amount of time with which meetings shorten than one hour or one hour or longer should be shortened. If you for instance choose End Early option and then leave the other options as suggested by Outlook, then when creating new appointments, they will be by default shortened to be 25 minutes instead of 30 and 50 minutes instead of one hour. Assuming that you and your colleagues follow meeting schedules, this is a very good option to ensure that you have some breaks between back-to-back -back meetings. Let's go back to the settings. In the Calendar Options section, you can also define how much earlier the different reminders should appear. This is set to 15 minutes and also define whether attendees are allowed to propose new times for meetings. Usually this is a good option to have on. You can also define what the default response should be when new meeting times are proposed. The Add Holidays to the Calendar option is very useful if you are working with teams located in different countries. By clicking Add Holidays button you will be able to add holidays, and not only bank holidays, of selected countries to your calendar. Thanks to this, you will be able to see for each day whether there is a holiday in another country, which will allow you to avoid selecting meeting dates colliding with these holidays. The Change the Permissions for Viewing Free Busy Information allows you to define who is allowed to see your free and busy information. By clicking on the Free Busy Options button, you will be able to add and remove users who are allowed to see these details. You can also enable alternative calendars. In this installation of Outlook, the default calendar is set to English, but you can change it to any of the other calendars in the list if it is relevant to you. Additionally, depending on what alternate calendar you choose, you can also choose the options for it. Please note that the list of options changes depending on which alternate calendar you choose. The last two options in this section allow you to define whether the meeting requests outside your organization are to be sent in the iCalendar format, this can be good in some cases for compatibility reasons, and whether a bell icon is supposed to be used to mark meetings with reminders. In the Display Options section, you can define what the default calendar color should be and also whether this color is supposed to be used for all calendars. By default, each calendar that is added to Outlook is displayed in different color in order to make it easier to distinguish between them. 
The next option in the display options section defines whether Outlook should show week numbers in the month view and in the date navigator. This setting is connected to the one of the first week of the year discussed earlier. In some countries it is customary to use week numbers instead of saying for instance the week of the 17th of April. In such case it is very useful to be able to see week numbers in the calendar in order to be able to know what dates are being discussed. However, please always ensure that others use the same week numbering as you, otherwise the same week number can indicate different dates. The remaining settings in this section define whether free appointments should be visible in the schedule view, by default this is disabled, and also when Outlook is supposed to switch from vertical layout to schedule view and the other way around depending on how many calendars are being displayed. The time zones section allow you to add up to two additional time zones to the calendar display and also give them names. By default, when you open the calendar, you will see times in the default time zone listed to the left on the schedule. If we go back to the settings, you will see that this default time zone normally does not have a name, but you can change it by entering a text in the label field. If you then go to the calendar again, you will see that there is a header over the column listing hours. Going back to the settings again, you can add additional time zones to the display. It is even more relevant than to name each of them. This is very useful if you are working in international teams and want to schedule meetings at times that are working for everyone. Being able to see what time it is in their time zone make, makes it much more easier to find the right time slot. The scheduling assistant section allows you to define whether meeting details should be shown as screen tips and in the scheduling grid. Normally this is a good idea to have both options on because it makes it easier for you to see meeting details just by moving your mouse cursor over it without the need of opening the meeting. The weather section allows you to define whether you want weather information to be shown in the calendar and what units the temperature is supposed to be shown in. Finally, the Meeting Insights section allows you to define whether Outlook is supposed to suggest relevant email addresses or documents for meetings in your calendar. It is a good idea to try having this option on. Outlook can then give you suggestions on which documents or emails you may want to read in preparation for the meeting. We hope that this video has given you a good overview of how to adjust Outlook calendar to your needs. Be sure to check our other videos to learn more about various Office applications.